We're on to season two of the New Orleans Saints franchise here on Madden 24. And today, we're going through the entire preseason, showing the highlights, the roster battles, and everything that'll take us into week one. We'll set our final roster and take a look at the players that make up the second version of this team now that we have an offseason under our belts. And we made a lot of big draft picks this year. Our first being cornerback Tommy Tomlinson, a very promising looking man cover corner. We then took James Bolden in the second round to be a linebacker of this team's future. I think he's got a chance to be a really complete player eventually. And we also addressed our offense a little bit, selecting Luke Rowe, who will step into a starting role as the team's new left guard. A true X factor, though, is wide receiver Jacoby Pierman, a player we took in the fifth round because of his explosiveness and downfield ability. But he's not a complete player. He struggles to catch the football at times. So we'll see what he can offer us. And we've also got a six foot five cornerback in Tyrell Stoudemire. I really like the players we came away with in this year's class. And we couldn't be flashy in free agency. So we have some veteran receivers vying for playing time as that second or third receiver, Josh Reynolds and Jawan Jennings, two players that I'm a fan of. And then we have some undrafted players also trying to fight for a roster spot. Here is Brian Johnson, a receiving back out of Colorado State. We go to the defensive side. James Houston was signed to a two-year contract as this team desperately needs to find some edge rush after the retirement of Cam Jordan. We also brought in A.J. Epinesa, who is 25 years old and I think can be moved around the D-line like Jordan was. At safety, taking over from Marcus May is second-year player Jordan Howden. We didn't see him play much last year outside of one main start, and now he looks to be a potential starter as we get the preseason underway. And I'll be bouncing around these games, really focusing just on highlights and players individually. So we're going right into it here. Starting offense, first quarter, game one against the Chargers, and a tough catch made by Josh Reynolds. So who can replace Michael Thomas? Got a few guys who are going to have the opportunity. Defensively now, losing Cam Jordan and still relying on some aging veterans like Demario Davis. What can we expect of the defense this season? Well, early on, it seemed like there was a big reason to worry about this team's run defense. This is not like a physical attacking run game, but it sure looks like it from the Chargers. And they cap this drive off with an Allen Robinson touchdown, scoring quickly and rather easily. Turning back to the starting offense again, Derek Carr out of the pocket, trying to make a play and finding Alvin Kamara downfield. Derek Carr, second year now in New Orleans, returns as our starting quarterback. And here trying to beat the blitz, good catch made by Josh Reynolds. We get down inside the red zone and Carr misfires on the throw for Chris Olave. Those kinds of plays happened a little too often a year ago. But we go for it here on fourth down, needing three. Nice grab by the second year running back, Kendra Miller, who is the primary backup to Alvin Kamara. Carr rolling left off the fake. He fires to the end zone and hooks up with Jawan Johnson, starting tight end. That did stand, by the way. A good touchdown for the offense. But again, back to this defense. Herbert lets it rip, and that's Josh Palmer on the receiving end. The uh, Chargers already had two touchdowns to this point, pretty much working down the field easily. It wasn't until this blitz that we could get them off the field on our terms. Final play here with the starting offense. Again, Carr using his mobility and finding Josh Reynolds, who left a pretty good impression here in his first quarter of preseason play. But we go to the second string offense now, led by second-year quarterback Jake Hayner, who did not appear in any games for us a year ago, and he hooks up with A.T. Perry. Perry is a reason why I was comfortable trading Michael Thomas. Also, we were broke. Had to do it anyway. Swing it out here to Brian Johnson, who's 
best chance of making this team is showing he can catch the football because that is something I really value in the running back position now. And we got to have that skill set. Remember Jamal Williams? We had him for a minute last year and we traded him to the Chargers. Comes back to gash us for 34. You thought the starting run defense was bad. It didn't get a whole lot better with the backups. Josh Rosen, end zone, caught, touchdown. Flag was on us for roughing the passer. This was not a good showing for the defense. Offense again, and in the running back spot now, that is Alabama undrafted rookie John Waters, as I also wanted to find a pure power back to start developing. Here's Hayner on the throw and connecting with the fifth round rookie, Jacoby Pierman. Chance to see him work here as a slot. And Hayner throws one outside, leaping grab Jawan Jennings. Good play. So with Hayner, you're going to get kind of that typical backup experience where he doesn't have the strongest arm, but his accuracy underneath is mostly good. And he's got a tiny bit of mobility as well. Throws this one a little bit behind Pierman. It's a little bit on Hayner here. Also catchable. And Pierman, he's going to be one of those guys that might end up with a few drops. Now, we also took a punter in the sixth round of the draft. That is Jack Becker pinning the Chargers inside their 15-yard line. Defense comes out, a two-minute drill for the Chargers, and this one is lofted downfield, getting behind Tommy Tomlinson. I wanted to see him get a lot of playing time here with the second unit. He gives up that throw, but then comes back and helps force this incompletion. Here's a second down play, and we blitz Rosen getting through Kalen Saunders. And a big thing I wanted to see here in this preseason is who could give us pass rush. And now that's just a blitzed, you know, dialed up pressure. So not one I'm going to say, like, nice job because he was unblocked. We got Jacoby Pierman there converting the third and long. And then Hayner lofts it deep for Foster Moreau. And he gets behind the defense for a big gain, but the clock runs out on us. Still, good to see that throw and catch. Second half now to the weak side Jamal Williams he shrugs off a tackler shrugs off the second guy as well and gets out of bounds sloppy tackling struggling to get off blocks it's a bad combo nice coverage though on that play that's Jaquan Johnson so he's a backup safety I believe he had a missed tackle on that previous uh, Williams run but makes a good play there and then this play ends up being made by Lonnie Johnson Jr. So the backup safety is making a couple nice plays for us. Third and five. And eventually, time running out. Kalen Saunders getting into the backfield. That's his second sack of the day. We go to the offense again. A third and 18. Let it fly, Jay. Caught by Pierman. Gets behind the defense, and there is no catching the rookie. Everybody wanted to see what could Jacoby Pierman do. He has the ability to win off the line of scrimmage. He's got blazing speed, also a decent release package right now. And if there is no safety help, it's hard to win a foot race against this guy. Back to the defense. Here's a shot. And just behind Tommy Tomlinson. That's a running back who made the play. I believe that was C.J. Verdell. And then Rosen ends up throwing this outside. And this is a good play by Jerry Rayburn, an undrafted linebacker I brought in for his cover skills. Did a good job there. But, uh, yeah, that run defense again. Sloppy. Touchdown Isaiah Spiller. This run defense is really worrying me. We go back to the offense, and after one vertical shot, let it go again, and Pierman makes the catch. Had a step, reels it in, showing that big play ability in single coverage. Jake Hayner gets it away, out to A.T. Perry now, and we get inside the 20. I'm impressed with Perry's route running development already at this stage of his career. 
John Waters now. This is where you want that power element. And we give him a chance to punch this in and gets denied around the one. We're going to come back right to him, though. Third and goal. Waters in this time behind some good blocking up front. Touchdown. We got the ball again. Nine minutes left. This is a fourth and eight. We're just going to go for it. Hayner lofting through the hands of Jacoby Pierman. So we've seen the big play upside and also the drops that can come with this play style he's got. 31-21 game. Rosen under pressure and he's sacked by Nephi Sewell, an off-ball linebacker. We were down 10, trying to mount a comeback, and that's a grab for undrafted receiver Braylon Farrow. And then we go to George Levins, another undrafted receiver. Both these guys are six foot four, six foot five, big physical receivers. Nice job here. Some shiftiness on display for Brian Johnson. Hayner, see, he can get outside the pocket and throw it on the money for Foster Moreau. We're down inside the 10. Hayner to the air. End zone. Court. Touchdown. Braylon Farrow. Nice job by these undrafted players helping us get down the field. We made this a one possession game. Rosen in the offense trying to run this game to the end. And yeah, when a lineman hits the safety, probably a bad sign to the defense. We load the box. Run blitzing was like our only option. Good tackle by Jerry Rayburn. Third and two now. Got to make this play really to have a chance. And Jordan Riley makes the play. I brought him in just for run defense. So I felt very vindicated with that play being made. Uh, Jerry Rayburn angry on the sideline. He'd be okay. Down six. Hayner takes a shot again. Caught by Pierman yet again. The Chargers have no idea what to do with him. What a coming out party for the fifth round rookie. Hayner not finished. Up top. Single coverage. He's got it. Touchdown, Pierman. Truly unlike anything I believe we've seen in any of these series when it comes to the preseason. What a debut. Looking like a fifth round steal is Jacoby Pierman. We took the lead. Leaving it up to our defense now to protect it. Soft zone. Easy yardage there underneath to Isaiah Spiller. Chargers got one timeout left. 12 seconds to go as they beat the coverage. Verdell gets open in the second level. And they would set up a field goal. 52 yards. We know the Chargers' history with the kicking position, but it might not apply to preseason games. As the kick is good, Chargers take the lead, leaving us just a few seconds left. We made sure Jacoby Pierman was back deep, knowing this would probably be our last shot. And trying to get outside, not going to happen. The Chargers win. Maybe the most exciting preseason game in the history of football. Jacoby Pierman had some outstanding moments, and Jake Hayner really looks like the guy who can be our backup quarterback. And he threw for 374 yards, three touchdowns. A really fantastic performance. Pierman goes seven for 219 and two. And after this, we were streaming these preseason games if you'd like to watch them. You wanted to see what he would do next as we take on the New York Jets. Here is Zach Wilson going empty. Gets it out underneath, and the pass is broken up by Alante Taylor. We force third and five. Bring the pressure. Here is Wilson just throwing it downfield. Wilson's down there somewhere, but it is off the mark. Demario Davis on the blitz, forcing the panicked throw of Zach Wilson. Just thought that was a pretty cool-looking play. So, of course... With Pierman's ability, I want him returning kicks and punts this year. Doesn't return this one all that far, and he would be shaken up on the play. 
This would not be a serious injury, but it did keep him out for much of this second preseason game. So I couldn't get him a look here with the starters, but we sure can see Elvin Kamara get a big play, a 40 yard touchdown with good downfield blocking as the starting offense continues to look pretty good. Let's bring that defense out again that struggled against the Chargers. Third and three, nowhere to go for Brees Hall. We stuffed that run really nicely. Taken over and Carr off the fake. Gonna move in the pocket and loft it out for Josh Reynolds. Already looking like somebody we can get on the field right away with the starting offense. And then it's Kamara capping this one off as well. I was really impressed here with the starting offense. You know, it was a night and day experience going up against Justin Herbert versus Zach Wilson. Picked off Paulson Adebo. Taken off inside the 10, trying to hurdle Zach Wilson and down at the 6. So we're trying to put this one in the end zone. Carr fakes it to Kamara. A.T. Perry trying to dive on in. He's taken out. And it's fourth and goal. So we bring in the undrafted John Waters. And the rookie is taken down. One on one. Jets with a goal line stand. So now we're obviously thinking we're in scoring position here defensively. Dalvin Cook taken down by Demario Davis. They give it right back to him, and Peyton Turner makes the play. That was nearly a safety. On third down, a little more space. Brees Hall, though, no first down. The Jets open this game against our starting defense with three three and outs and an interception. Really good showing. Carr, Reynolds again getting open. I let him run a lot of the Olave stuff that we don't need to see Olave run until the games count. So we get inside the one. Waters again. No forward momentum there. We go on second down. A little play action now. Car to the outside. Touchdown. It's Taysom Hill. Back again. And I'm sure he'll still have a pretty big role in this offense. 24-0. A dominant showing here for the starters. Brees Hall to the edge, and he's stopped again by Tyron Matthew. We look like we have a run defense when we go against the Jets. They would end up here at the 28-yard line, and Wilson up top, can't connect, facing Marshawn Lattimore's coverage. So they bring out the field goal team now, trying to get on the scoreboard, and Tommy Tomlinson blocks the field goal and makes the tackle. Nice play for him. Jets stay scoreless. Here's Derek Carr. 22 seconds to go in the half. Outside. Hooking up with A.T. Perry. That's a money throw and catch. 17 seconds to go now. Carr pressured and sack given up here by Ryan Ramchak, who really did struggle against uh, John Franklin Myers a little bit when they were matched up. 27-0, though. Second half opens, and we don't got Pyramid in there, but we still got a special teams highlight. This is the undrafted corner, Jason Kelly, with the touchdown. So there's one for his resume. 34-3 as we move on, and now this is Dalvin facing the backups. Yeah, sloppy tackling there by Tyrell Stoudemire, who missed two tackles on the same play. Jets have it at the 29. Dalvin right side. Spun around down to the 13. Starting to actually have success on the ground. Here's a pass incomplete. That's why we got Stoudmeyer. Not his run defense. That's terrible. But he can cover. Third and four. This pass is off the mark. Could have been intercepted maybe by Lonnie Johnson Jr. So we're going to turn this back to the offense now. Pierman is in the game, by the way. But Hayner's going to throw it across the middle. Dangerous play there for A.T. Perry. Unable to hold on to it. And you know what? Let's see if this play works. With Pierman, pretty much everything seems to work. As long as he'll catch the football. So there's a seven-yard pickup. We go back defensively. 
And this pass downfield, it's caught. Had a step there on Tyrell Stoudmeyer. Jets go inside the 10, and that play is perfect. That was the undrafted Tyler Rhodes in coverage, and Marquise Jones, uh, rookie safety, or rookie tight end, makes the play. It's going to be a run here. John Waters behind a good effort by our receivers out there. A.T. Perry working in the slot. First and 10, a counter. And again, it opens up. Waters doesn't have blazing speed, but... At times, he showed the ability to get some extra yards and break some tackles. So that was promising to see. Hayner stepping up, and yeah, he can run a little bit. He can dive awkwardly, get some yards. We go fourth and two here. Hayner to the air. Throwing downfield. It's caught. Jacoby Pierman. Just showing how much he can do here on, you know, the first couple games of his career. 37-13 game, and tight coverage on a Stoudemire. He had a chance to pick that one off. Hard to get it over the 6'5 rookie. We would then put in our third quarterback, Malik Cunningham, and his first pass is a touchdown to Jacoby Pierman. Another score for the rookie. This is an incredible preseason for him. Jets trying to score. And they got one-on-one -on -one coverage! Nice job by Stoudemire on the pass that was a little bit underthrown. They'd come back on third and eight, though, and run the crosser past him, and that is a Jets score. So, a little back and forth there with the rookie Stoudemire and Jason Brownlee. They traded wins, and that's a touchdown. Jets have it again now in a 24-point game. Good coverage there by Jerry Rayburn, who uh, I was impressed with at times. And here's a downfield throw now that nearly got intercepted by Tommy Tomlinson. Overall, I was really impressed with these two corners. Like, at times you're going to get beat, but all it takes really is one good play for a defense to throw off an offensive possession. Against better quarterbacks, you probably need two, three plays on a drive to really make anything happen, but I was impressed seeing these two battle. Jets trying to close the gap here a little bit, and they found a big hole there in the defense. And, you know, I'm not really going to show a lot of pass rush failure here. The video is already almost 40 minutes as it is, but there weren't a lot of pass rush highlights and we were relying so much on those cornerbacks to just make plays and cover for a lot longer than you should have to on a regular basis. We rotated in different defensive linemen, different edge rushers, and no one was really stealing the show there. But I did feel like there was a lot to like defensively with uh, some of the linebackers at times. And in the secondary, both those rookie corners came in and impressed me. So we got one more game to go here in the preseason. And uh, we are going to see the Chargers in Week 18. But we're also going to see our last opponent, the Kansas City Chiefs. We had some wide receiver mentorship beforehand. I'm like, yes, let's see Jacoby Pierman. But it ends up being A.T. Perry, actually, who's catching the eye of Josh Reynolds. He's calling him Josh Jr., so despite the almost 300 yards Pierman had, he was not the one getting the mentorship. Still, it's valuable for A.T. Perry. He gets some release, something he needs to play more on the outside, and then medium route running. I think he's on his way. And then we had a training camp standout. And this goes to Paulson Adebo, who did have that interception against Zach Wilson and I thought he played really well down the stretch at times a year ago. Less good when Lattimore went down, but plus five man coverage is a definite help. So let's get into our final game here. A chance to preview one of our opponents, A.T. Perry. I mean, Josh Jr. on the reception getting first down yardage. We go to second down and nine. Carr across the middle and Perry using that medium route running. And he gets the first down. 
We take this down inside the 10. Car to the end zone. Court touchdown. It's Chris Olave. Another impressive drive for this starting offense. We looked better than I expected. But now I wanted to see our starting defense here because we struggled against the Chargers, dominated the Jets. Here's Isaiah Pacheco right down the middle, getting about 11 on that play. Comes back here with Mahomes over the middle. Rasheed Rice on the reception. Again, not really throwing Mahomes off with the pass rush. And then it's Pacheco to the outside. Again, first down yardage. Mahomes in the shotgun. We send four. Travis Kelsey on the reception. Coverage wasn't bad there. That's just a tough combination to slow down. Knocked down. Paulson Adebo. That forces a fourth down. And the Chiefs would go for it here at our 36. So we load the box. Anticipating run. And right by the Honey Badger goes Pacheco for the touchdown. Yeah, I think we got to be concerned with our run defense. The Jets were, you know, a team that doesn't have a great offensive line. The Chiefs obviously do. And that's just going to be a rough matchup whenever we face one of these clearly, like, upper-level O-lines. Pacheco up the middle. Taken off again. Wanting the end zone. And this time it's sloppy tackling, allowing him to reach it. Yeah, I don't think that Tyron Matthews is going to play elite run defense here at this stage of his career. And Jordan Howden, you know, he didn't even make contact. He was stuck on a block and then got lost there in the traffic. So I did put in Hayner early here and a lot of the backup offensive players because I didn't need to see more of like Derek Carr. But uh, I wanted to see more of Jake Hayner and Josh Reynolds. Here is the defense out there again. And there's some pressure on Mahomes. That's Isaiah Foskey. That's one of our best pass rush highlights of the entire preseason. 14-7 ball game. Hayner. Perry extension. First down. Really good to see him make those two plays in the second level. Hayner is blitzed though. Oh, he gets crushed by Nick Bolton. Yeah, this was going to be tough sledding for Hayner against this aggressive Chiefs defense. Three minutes to go in the first half. Pacheco again. Wide open space. We're lucky they didn't run with him more. Brian Brissy shaking up here, and he would be okay. But he's one of our best defensive linemen, and we wouldn't have him for a bit against this defense. A little pressure there from Nathan Shepard, and Mahomes is going to run for a big gain of 17. I thought Nathan Shepard was maybe one of our other more impressive defensive linemen. Didn't get a lot of sacks, but he did cause some disruption at times. No stopping the Travis Kelsey touchdown here. 21-7. Hayner heading to the air. Protected and cut by Jawan Jennings at the 37. Here is Hayner again, going to run with it and dives ahead to the 44-yard line. 50 seconds on the clock, and Perry downfield makes the nice grab. Hayner, 7 of 9, 92 yards, really playing well throughout this preseason. And under pressure on this play, it would be our first interception of the entire preseason. There were some drops that could have been picked off, but that is the First one. Usually in the preseason, we end up with like 10. Here is Mahomes. Out to Kelsey. Catch and run for the first down. 17 of 19. Struggling to make plays against Mahomes. And there is another catch by Justin Ross. Yeah, against better quarterback play, this defense did seem a bit lost at times. And that lack of pass rush really... Shows its weakness. Travis Kelsey scores again. Here in the third quarter, Jay Kaner, first and ten, going to roll out. We have a chance downfield, but he does not have the arm to make that throw. So that's what leads to a lot of these guys being backups. When you don't have a strong arm, 
you're a little bit more limited in some of the things you can do, obviously. Here is Patrick Mahomes, and he should have been intercepted by Jordan Howden. It was thrown right to him. Third and two. They go Pacheco's way. When we play more aggressive, we have a much better chance against the run. I think we're just going to have to embrace that this year. It's the way it's going to be. A fake here from Hayner. That throw goes out to John Waters. Threw him the ball a few times. He caught, I think, all the passes thrown his way. And then Hayner, heavy pressure. He is dropped. That was uh, Cesar Ruiz giving up the pressure to Chris Jones, who will do that in one-on-one. -on -one. Malik Cunningham now in the game. Little dump off there to Brian Johnson. Also looked pretty strong in the receiving game. On second and one. Good grab. Nope. Didn't hold on. Jacoby Pierman. That's going to be the kind of play we probably try not to throw his way too much. Cunningham on the quarterback sweep. Got just enough there. Extending this drive as he steps up and drops it over the middle. George Levins to the 22-yard line. In the final quarter here of the preseason, Cunningham across the middle and Levins does it again. Those are impressive plays. Saints inside the 10. Cunningham on the roll. He will throw it and Hill unable to hold on. 31-7 as we move forward. Two minutes to go in the game. And the Chiefs would bring in the rookie Heisman Trophy winner. This is Shaquille Patterson. He's trying to close things out against this defense. And it would not be much of a challenge. They would run it down our throats here and finish the preseason. Overall, had a really fun time with these three games. Feel a lot better about our offense than I do the defense. I think our pass rush is going to really struggle. And although we were a pretty good rush unit last year, I'm expecting regression, and we'll see if anyone's able to step up. I really hope we, we can find a way. And if we aren't able to, we're going to have to be aggressive. We're going to have to do a lot of blitzing this year, I feel. And hopefully with our secondary, it's a combination that works. I believe in our cornerbacks quite a bit. But it is uh, a lot of responsibility to put on them with the style of defense we might have to play. I thought our quarterbacks played extremely well. I was very impressed with Jay Kaner. The undrafted rookies got a lot of carries, and I thought it went okay. But they're not earning playing time, you know, anytime soon. Jacoby Pierman was excellent. Jerry Rayburn, as a coverage linebacker, led us in tackles, which caught my eye. He made a few plays. Kalen Saunders had some strong moments, but overall, very few pass rush highlights. So here's where we are going into the start of the year. This is our practice squad. Malik Cunningham goes here. Braylon Farrow, the wide receiver. Jason Kelly, because I only wanted five cornerbacks on the active roster to start the season. There were a few players I had to just sign from free agency. But I think a fair amount of these players, mainly the ones that we had in the preseason, could find themselves on the active roster down the road, but need the practice squad development. Here's Jason Kelly at 68 overall. I think we can get away with having him on the practice squad for a little bit. But his coverage, you know, it just needs development. But he's a really good fit for what we want to do with our man coverage mentality. Here is the transaction log showing some of the cuts, including Landon Young who is replaced by an undrafted rookie. JT Gray is released. But overall, nothing too surprising here with the final cutdowns. And we had signed like a few, you know, highly rated practice squad eligible players who ended up getting signed almost immediately. But that's our practice squad. And you notice here a lot of editing. What I did for the undrafted players, of which seven made our active roster, seven undrafted free agents, what I did is I edited every single one of them to have a three-year contract, because that's what happens in the NFL. Undrafted players are signed to three-year deals. When those are up, they then become restricted free agents. 
and you'd have to give up, you know, like a draft pick in order to sign them, for instance. Now, Madden doesn't have that, so I've just given them three-year deals, and I didn't just do it for our players. I went throughout the entire league, found every UDFA that made a team, and gave them a three-year deal. Some teams have kickers that now have three-year contracts. Some teams had undrafted players who had star development, and now they won't have to sign them at the end of the year to like larger, like four to $5 million a year contracts. So that'll be really good, I think, for the league. Six receivers make the team, including George Levins, three tight ends, and then a couple undrafted rookies here across the offensive line. There's right guard, Jarius Bryant, and then our backup tackle is Manny Golson, another undrafted rookie. I wanted to get our depth younger. I think we achieved that. We must have, like, close to 15 rookies on this roster. I also signed one veteran. You saw how bad our run defense was, so I signed Justin Jones to help us at least a little bit. He's had some good play with the Bears, and hopefully he can give us at least a little bit better play than we saw in the preseason. And then we made uh, five defensive tackles make this active roster. There are going to be six total linebackers, including Jerry Rayburn and then Tyler Rhodes as the middle linebacker, two UDFAs at linebacker overall, Nephi Sewell, the other backup outside linebacker. Five corners, because all five of these guys, to me, can play. So no need to have a sixth cornerback right now. And then we have five safeties on the active roster. And Jordan Howden is going to be the starter going into week one. We also have one kicker and one punter, Jack Becker. So that is the active roster. Injuries going into week one. We had two occur in the practice ahead of the first game. Marshawn Lattimore is set to miss another one. He did not play the end of the season, our playoff game, and now we have to play without him and A.T. Perry. Luckily, I think we have players that can step in to replace those guys. So here's what the lineup looks like going into the opener. I feel pretty good about our offense, as long as Olave stays healthy, honestly. And then on defense, I think, you know, our run defense is going to be something we game plan around a lot. Tommy Tomlinson is now in line to get a big start with Lattimore out. And we have a lot to evaluate, I think, with this really young front seven, Jordan Howden, Tommy Tomlinson. With James Bolden, he might not play every snap right away, but he should be out there a decent bit in the base defense and play all the special teams, which will earn him, honestly, probably 15 to 20 extra snaps playing all that special teams. Jacoby Pierman, we're going to find ways to use him, that's for sure. He's not going to have like a defined, you know, starting role right away, but he's going to be out there and he's going to be doing what he does best. And we're going to open this season against a rookie quarterback as the Buccaneers selected Jason Tracy towards the top of the second round. And his debut is going to be against our defense, missing Marshawn Lattimore. And we did lose to the Bucs late last season. They also have a running back that we may see, Chris Robinson. And as we take on teams, I'll be doing some more editing to their rookies with their equipment and numbers, which I know a lot of you will like. Overall, with this team, I think that our defense is not as good as what we put out a year ago, and we have a much tougher schedule. It doesn't start all that tough, but we face a lot better AFC teams this year. We face more of the upper tier NFC teams with games against the Eagles and the Cowboys, and I think it's going to be a, a challenging season, but fun to see how the young players develop and how this team really comes together, and we get into week one next time against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let me know what you think of our team going into the start of the year, and let me know if there are any young players that you think can make a big difference in Season 2. This really is where I feel like a franchise truly begins and the fun starts, so let's get on to it here in a couple days. Have a great day, everybody. See you next time.